Okay, so welcome back from that. Hope you're excited as we are with all the 16 contestants that we have lined up for uh, the bite battle. You already explained a bit the concept, so uh, let's not go over that uh, again. Uh, we have uh, one thing that I can announce for you is the, the eight first round matchups that we have lined up. Um, we will have uh, Super Rogue versus Exoticorn. We'll have Gasman versus FMS Cat. Uh, Yobi versus Dresden Boy. Uh, Tomcat versus myself, which am a last minute replacement for Killed by a Pixel, who unfortunately couldn't make it. Uh, Aldroid versus VC. Uh, Pestis versus Black Hole. Mantra Tonic will go up against Popolon. And Nusan versus Gopher. Uh, for those who don't know, Nusan and Gopher will be like a battle of the champions. Like literally, one of them won the Love Bite, uh, Bite battles. That happened at Love Bite Demo Party. And the other one won the Bite Battle that one that happened at Outline. So it's literally two champions on the first round going head to head. I'm very much looking forward to those kind of things. Uh, Yobi, any particular matchup of all these groups that you were uh, curious on? Well, you mentioned the news on versus Gopher, so I'm definitely definitely gonna watch that and keep an eye on whoever qualifies from that match. Basically, I'm, all of all of the matchups are because we have uh, uh, people from very different backgrounds, so every matchup is going to be interesting. Exotic Corn, do you have any favorite matchups or someone that you are predicting that might uh, reach the finals? Uh, well, other than the obvious, uh, Nielsen and Gopher, um, I'm not sure. I think that at Love Bite, I really liked what... Um, forgetting the handle? Yeah, I'm forgetting the name. Tomcat, what Tomcat did. I think his effects were quite clean and beautiful. I, I heard he was preparing a lot for these Bite Battles, so I'm curious how he's going to so, pull out. And he's very case, active on the yeah. size coding community. So, it's, so yeah, definitely someone I, to watch out for, I think. A Gasman always does something out of the box. He always has something cheeky. So I'm really curious to see what he's going to pull off. He's up against FMS Cat, which is going to be a tough matchup. FMS Cat did very good at Outline. I was very uh, pleasantly surprised on, on uh, the stuff that he came up. He's mostly used to shader coding. He's from Japan and he, he has like a not the same background that us mm. more regular Europeans have, and we are used to, you know, old school frame buffers and that kind of stuff. Uh, but FMS cat still surprised me quite quite positively. So I'm uh, very curious to that matchup in particular as well. Um, what do you think about your matchup against Super Rogue Exotic Horn? Are you excited for that? Uh, or are yes, you fearful of, but... of, of Super Rogue? <laughs> I think it will be a very, very hard match for me. Um, it's I it's hope that I, it will be. I hope that it will be close, but um, yeah, I, I think it's a hard match. But what I about mean, you, Yobi? What, what do you think about your matchup versus Dresden Boy? Yeah, it's uh, this is my, my first time live coding, so I don't really, I don't know what to expect. But I'm you excited. liar! I saw you code live <laughs> at the live stream <laughs> once for the yeah, but there. it was it wasn't proper live coding because I used notes then. So. Ah. Yeah, you can still write some notes, like for each keyword, you can prepare some notes. Oh, yeah, I guess. <laughs> um, so, Aldroid versus VC is going to be interesting as well. Both of them have, uh, well, Aldroid is still getting the hang of what their style is, but VC usually does some fucked up psychedelic stuff. So I'm very curious how that's going to turn out. I'm sure it's going to be a, a fun matchup to follow. Mm -hmm. And we have Pestis versus Black Hole. I'm definitely very interested in what's going to come out of this. Black Hole is just insane. She does like weird stuff all the time. So I'm curious what she's going to do on the Tick 80. She mostly comes from the shader coding community as well. So uh, mm -hmm. she isn't very used mm -hmm. to the platform. So I wonder how that will turn out. And Pestis, I actually, I single-handedly brought Pestis into the Tick 80 scene. So I'm very curious what he's going to do. And he did a 256 byte intro for your flash party, which was really cool. Uh, in my humble opinion, should have won the, 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 the compo there. Uh, I think he got second place out of it, but it was really, really cool to see. So I'm very curious how well he's going to do on the bite battle here. 
what's left? Mantratonic versus Populon. We can also talk a little bit about these two. Both of them are very experienced on the TIC-80. Mantratonic has been uh, following the development of TIC-80 for a long time. He's been one of the first demo seniors actively using the platform to do stuff. And Populon's been doing some stuff with the TIC-80 for a long time as well. It's not particularly active in the demo scene, but on the TIC-80 community, he's a very known uh, programmer. So uh, very curious what, what on the matchup between those two as well. The difference between this one and the previous editions that happened at Love Byte and Outline, two different events that occurred earlier this year, is the introduction of keywords, where you have a specific theme that you're somehow supposed to follow. Uh, and uh, how, how did you, opinions from both of you, how did you think that, is that better, is that worse, is that more nerve-wracking? Uh, Exotic Art, maybe you first. Um. I was all for that. I actually also suggested that. Um, to what what was the like keyword you, you submitted? Uh, it, it was triangles, nothing really uh, special. That's, yeah, pretty I mean, easy. come on. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. It's, it's standard. It's very standard, yeah, I guess. But um, now having actually done some practice rounds, trying to code an effect to a random keyword, I must say that I'm not sure that it really suits me because <laughs> I think I need a little more time to come up with some good effect for a keyword. Mm. But uh, I mean, it's And it's really it's hard fun. to prepare for like a whole bucket list of keywords. Yeah, exactly. I, I think overall we had like 12, 16 keywords. So you can't yeah. possibly prepare. And you only know like 15 minutes before the bite battle starts what is the keyword that you've been assigned. So really make things a lot harder. Mm. Uh, Yobe, do you have uh, any feelings about the keyword? Which one was the keyword that you submitted? Uh, the keyword I submitted was duck. Duck, OK. Yeah. Any uh, uh, like duck 3DS or any duck would do? Any duck would do. Any duck will do. OK, um, you're, you're an open-minded person. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I, I like that uh, the keywords add an element of challenge. It's kind of like you you can't just prepare by uh, learning how to do the best best XOR texture tunnel ever, but you kind of have to think on your feet, prepare for a lot of uh, dif different scenarios, and also like figure out how to implement the keyword so that you also like also have room for for interesting visuals so like so you think yeah. it's a plus to to the competition or would you rather have something without the keyword uh well from i think it this thus far it seems that it's a plus but i'm gonna have to watch the whole whole tournament and see how people how the contestants like it how it affects mm -hmm. their effects so okay but I, I have a good feeling about it okay uh yeah, let's move on to other topics uh, exotic do you want to add something or oh just that i absolutely love the idea of having that um in one of my practice runs i had an idea which completely failed it just crashed and burned it didn't work out at all so i just hope that this doesn't happen to anyone here, <laughs> but it could happen. And I mean, in some part, it's part of the challenge. Yeah, but, yeah I, I think I, it's a good addition. It's important because otherwise you can just over prepare and that doesn't feel right either. So mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, definitely. Um, uh, how we got the keywords was pretty much asking every single participant to drop one in the basket and then we would randomly pick with a random number generator might or might not be influenced by havoc he has promised us that this time in particular he is not uh messing with that uh can you trust havoc with these things i don't know <laughs> but I, sure. I, will, I will i will i will choose to trust him this time we'll um, see which keywords i've picked Okay, other topics that we have for discussing. How does Byte Battle live coding differ from making fantasy console demos or intros? Yobe, you're the perfect person to answer this. Mm -hmm. How does how, What is the main difference between these two things? 
the main main difference is that you can't spend dozens and dozens of hours of iterating and reiterating and crunching everything. So just like when I'm doing a demo, I I tend to obsess over a lot of lots of technical details and it's a really long drawn out process. So this is basically like a byte battle is the exact opposite of that. You just uh, you have something that you can throw to throw together fast. You do it fast. You uh, iterate it fast, and you don't sweat the details as much as you might when you're doing a demo. Otikorn, do you agree? Yeah, that's uh, yeah. Just the, the the time limit is the most uh, the largest factor, but. Um, when thinking about TIC80, there's also the case that um, when you do a tiny intro on TIC80, you very much uh, work around the pack, the compression, the, the zip compression. And mm. it's somewhat of a different kind of coding because it's very cheap to repeat things or to have some stuff that is not exactly repeated, but similar, like you have already drawn one circle, then drawing another circle with uh, related coordinates is very cheap. But uh, the same is not true in byte, it's because there it's just a character count. And yeah, it's, yeah. that was it one of the major slightly... differences that I noticed between uh, yeah. doing size coding entries like 256 byte angels for the tick 80 and doing actually byte bell. It's a different way of optimizing because you let the packer do so much of it that you you mm -hmm. have to learn a new set of tricks of what will compress better with the packer itself and yeah. what you need to actually be manually replacing to make sure that you already are giving it like the smallest code possible yeah but of course mm -hmm. if you don't have the time to actually reach uh, the size optimiz optimization stage mm -hmm. then it doesn't really matter that much but yeah <laughs> yeah if you have time to optimize then it's slightly different Okay, uh, a lot of the viewers that are watching us might be uh, curious, how do you get into coding for fantasy consoles? Uh, Yobe, again, you're one of the most perfect guests to, to answer this because you weren't really a programmer. You knew how to program, mm -hmm. but you weren't really active programming stuff regularly. And you got active on the Pico 8 and you did some of the most amazing demos for the Pico 8. So how did you get started? How, where do you, what is the best way to get into programming for a fantasy console? Well, uh, you boot up the fantasy console, you start experimenting with stuff in the... Because I, I like the fact that they have a, a built-in editor, because uh, when you really progress to doing like serious, complicated demo stuff, you probably don't use the built-in editor anymore, <laughs> but it makes the initial step so much uh, like easier to see it like directly there so basically you just uh, figure out what what you want to do like first you get a feeling of the system like how to draw a circle how to draw a pixel or such that that's pretty simple and then you basically just figure out some old school demo effect like plasma or fire and figure out how to do that and then start experimenting with uh, what you can do with that what other kind of things you can do just start learning things and sooner or later you'll have uh, you'll have a selection of effects and you can start making a pro putting them together in a production but just uh, start with the small start with small details the and yeah. why do you think it's a good entrance point to programming? Do you, does it have benefits over, I don't know, starting with JavaScript on a browser or learning process? It, it kind of brings me back to the, like, uh, the eight, to the eighties when I had an MSX computer and I booted an, booted the computer and I just had a basic interpreter right there. I could just start writing 
code right there and type run and it it did stuff and it's this kind of uh, this sort of immediacy that's usually missing when you're developing things on like more modern systems and that kind of fantasy consoles take back to take at least they take me back to that time when I was just a little kid playing around with basic yeah I mean I think that's the whole point of the fantasy consoles it's basically taking that that feeling back from back there but uh, having a slightly more modern language in Lua I mean it's it has its quirks but it's definitely more modern than basic and yeah more powerful than basic but yeah, yeah but it, it really feels a lot like the computers back then and if you do some JavaScript, well, you have to have some HTML skeleton and then the JavaScript, there's some setup before you can actually draw stuff. Mm-hmm. And yeah, on, on fantasy consoles, it's just, uh, if you have your tick or update function and you just put a draw a method, draw instruction in there and you have something on screen. It felt very it's like processing for me, and uh, but yeah. processing still had some things which you would have to get from like libraries, which you would end up having like to open the can of worms and and mm-hmm. learn uh, all kind of kind of different stuff that was not just the editor. And these fantasy consoles seem to like constrain you more to the editor. Uh, Exotic or I have a question for you. What yeah. was it like? You, you've been so experienced programming in other stuff for so many years. What was it like getting into TIC80 now? Did it, was it like refreshing, different? Did it feel silly? Why does it interest you in any way? Uh, well, it's just that now with a small kid, I don't just don't have as much time. And yeah, you can get something going on a fantasy console very quickly. Hmm. Basically, I got into TIC80 just before outline i think basically a week before outline i thought i had no way to make any kind of entry for the party because i didn't have much time and then i basically learned about tick 80 and uh, yeah at the party i had an entry in every category i think <laughs> so it's... i i I learned Lua for the Tick 80. I never used Lua in my life. I might have looked at a few mm-hmm. scripts and I never bothered actually learning the syntax because it just felt like, yay, another scripting language. I'm really going to need one of those. And for the Tick 80, I started learning Lua and actually, uh, I, I think it's 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 fun to have these kind of new limits. Um, I have some interesting discussions that I had uh, with uh, mostly Genio about how musicians feel like they're getting reconstrained with the limits of something that's like a quirky machine and they rather just use everything that they have. While for the coders, it feels more refreshing the other way around. We're so used to mm. having everything around that is possible that having something that is actually like this limited and specific, it feels more it feels more interesting to explore uh, and relearn some basic quirks. Yeah, and it's also uh, refreshing because you don't have to be to do super complicated stuff. You yeah. can do quite simple effects, and they are cool on this platform. Yeah, and definitely. If you do a demo this these days, you just have to invest so much time and effort into that. Uh, yeah. I have a specific question here about size coding, uh, about Pico 8 size coding in particular. Is it possible to create quality tiny intros in Pico 8? Because in TIC 80, we managed to get like the compressor, the packer to do a lot of uh, uh, compression for you, which is for free since the, the card itself will unpack it. Uh, but for the Pico 8, it has a bit more overhead from what I heard. So I think yeah. Super Old made a proof of concept doing a 256 byte but it was like you don't have much room for code yobe have you tried mm-hmm. anything with that is there anything you would like to share with yeah. us about this in particular any thoughts uh not i don't have i, I kind of uh, did did a brief experiment today to see because uh, like uh, one difference between the pico 8 and the tick 80 is that the pico 8 has a virtual cpu cycle limit so Basically, with the TIC-80, you can just use your whole CPU, but with Pico-80, you have this uh, virtual limit. And I, a lot of the 
like 256 byte intro effects on the uh, tick ADR like they just to go through the whole uh, whole screen and calculate for every pixel so I did an experiment where on the Pico 8 where I did just uh, calculated uh, like a tan and a distant function for every uh, every pixel on the screen so the frame rate went to like 25 percent so <laughs> do i think that there can be quality size quality like small intros on the pico 8 yeah probably but it's gonna have to be like technically and aesthetically very different than what we are what we're used to seeing on the on the tick tick 80 because everything's so different the the cpu limit is so different the compression is so different the palette is so different so and i think that the tick 80 is probably always going to be a more popular size coding platform but i can see like a, a pico 8 getting some like popularity as an alternative size coding platform with its own kind of style mm -hmm. Definitely, Pico 8 has been around for much longer, so it's the, one of the most popular. Actually, one of the questions that I had here suggested by Super Rogue is to talk about the differences between the Pico 8 and the TIC 80, which is mostly the ones that Yobi already mentioned. It has like a limit on the CPU use. It has some other limits, like uh, memory restrictions and that kind of stuff. Yobi, do you want to explain yeah, a bit it, more about those constraints? I think you you know yeah, them the, quite well. The main constraints are the CPU limit. Then there's a token limit where, like, uh, if you write A equals three, that's three tokens, and you have room for uh, 8,000 tokens. And you have, uh, I think it was two megabytes of memory for, like, the variables and such. So you can, you can pre calc a, a some amount of stuff as long as it fits into the two megabytes and okay so those are the main differences uh fantasy demo coding currently seems leaning more towards pico 8 uh mm -hmm. do you see this changing well we definitely at least in terms of demo scene we definitely saw a lot of tick 80 interest rising up in this uh, last year not sure if it's because it's open source or uh, if, if it just happened but uh what are your your thoughts on this yeah, uh, I think well, part of that is it's that it's open source, and maybe one element is that it's less restrictive than the Pico Eight. So it's if you if you're not used to like doing the kind of thing that kind of coding that kind of mixes a modern like a modern uh, uh, type of graphics coding, but with uh, like severe CPU limitations with that Pico 8 has, if you just don't want to be, to be that strict, then I, then the TIC 80 probably is easier to approach. So. Mm -hmm. Xotikorn, do you have any opinion on this? Yeah, I think that, I mean, TIC 80 has mostly gained popularity for tiny intros, I guess, mm -hmm. not so much for Big demos. Yeah, the and Pico 8 is definitely winning on that front, mostly yeah. because of Yobe. Yobe, Yobe <laughs> did a lot of quite, very good Pico 8 demos. Quite possibly, yeah. But uh, I think that this actually makes some sense because the fantasy consoles are about limitations mm -hmm. in, in quite a big way. And if you're size coding, then you have the size as a limitation, and that's fine. But if you're coding a demo, then I think there should be a CPU limitation and, and a memory uh, limitation like the Pico 8 has. Because otherwise, if you have basically unlimited CPU and unlimited memory, then all the other limitations just don't matter that much anymore. Yeah. Like, I don't know. Uh, so I think that for demos where you don't have a size limitation, you probably want the Pico 8, simply because, yeah, 
you don't want unlimited CPU, that's quite boring. If you, have, if you want unlimited CPU, then just code for the PC, I guess. Yeah, some people prefer the Pico 8 because it has those more hard yeah. restrictions and it, it makes you feel like you're achieving something more special because you are within those restrictions. Yeah. But uh, I guess that's mm -hmm. philosophical discussion at this point. Just code whatever for whatever you prefer. Yeah, of course. Like. Sure. All demos are good demos, whatever platform, yeah, as long no, as you make definitely. them make them cool and awesome, they're welcome. Uh, more topics that we have to discuss go through the different competitions that we have. We already went through these, uh, the 128, 256, demo competition, graphics, and music. Which ones are you guys looking forward to the most? Yobe. I'm looking forward to the 256 parts because I know it's going to be awesome and the demos because I hope it's going to be awesome. <laughs> because 256 is definitely going to be very competitive very awesome and the demo compo is probably going to be good but i'm hoping to see something that will really like blow my mind on either platform and like well pico 8 is at this point my favorite platform of the two but i'm kind of hoping to see something amazing on the tick 8 specifically hmm. okay because like because because, like you said, of, of of the two platforms, it's the it has like less full blown demos on it. So maybe it'll change. Yeah, make some make some competition to the Pico Eight. Bra big brain shock to Japanese brain. Uh, my favorite is actually I'm looking forward to the 256 byte just for the legacy that it's been. Like it on the Tick 80, it seems that it's been one of the most interesting competitions. We haven't had that many full fledged demos on the on the Tick 80. We had a few, um, like False Pyre is the most famous one that really took most advantage of the capacities of the machine. I haven't seen others really exploring the maximum. We had a few other stuff that had come out and they were okay, but I don't expect that we'll have like a massive combo. I hope that I'm wrong. Let's see what uh, what we hear. I heard also from the grapevine that the graphics competition is going to be pretty good. So stay tuned for that. I'm looking forward uh, to that. Not many entries for the music compo, as far as I know, but uh, I do know we have some talented musicians. Uh, let's see if we... Things have changed since I've heard the great part. I haven't looked at the database, just what I've been hearing from the organizers for the last couple of days, so uh, I could be completely wrong. Let's let's wait and see. Exoticorn, what are you most looking forward to on the compos? I think the demo compo. I... Excited to see what, especially on the Pico 8, comes up. I okay. haven't followed. I haven't followed the scene there very much, but I think it could be an exciting platform, and I hope that I see some nice demos this weekend. Okay, cool. Let's see. Uh, do you think we can build bridges with uh, adjacent communities like TweetChams and the Twitter, the Twitter, uh, etc.? I think there's been already some overlap with that, but I'm curious to hear about. Uh, uh, your uh, concept or idea, uh, response to that. Sorry, lacking words. Uh, Yobe, do you think there is, is there a possibility that we can build more bridges with other yeah, communities? That definitely, do outreach. Outreach is important. Outreach is what we're doing right right here, right now. I'm I'm guessing uh, and hoping we have uh, like a lot of, like a lot of uh, not really. I hope we have a lot of viewers who are like not really in the demo scene but interested in it and like outreach is what we're doing right now and and yeah because like when you think of like the tweet cards the tweet jam thing that's kind of like cl already close pretty close to what we're doing yeah. so I don't see why that it's not it's it, it's a gap that basically takes a pretty tiny bridge mm -hmm. to to cross it. It's a matter of a demo party organizing a compo and promoting it properly on those networks, yeah. and you'll you'll get those people showing up for the to yeah. watch that stream and uh, participate, even remote submit uh, to stuff. Um, Exoticorn, mm -hmm. do you have an opinion on this topic? Yeah, I think it's 
it's good to try that. And uh, I think that the bite battles are a very good um, vehicle for that. Uh, for example, Kid by Pixel, who, well, couldn't make it this time, but <laughs> uh, he's from those communities, right? From Twitter. Yeah. And um, yeah, I think this is a very good opportunity to pull people into this uh, corner of the scene. Yeah, because... uh, I'll take this wonderful opportunity to thank the organizers, the main organizers of Love Blight uh, Battlegrounds. I'm helping them uh, hosting some of the sections, but I'm not the main organizer. Uh, all props go to Super Rogue and Havoc. Uh, Super Rogue, main organizer. Havoc helping with all the logistics of uh, recordings and uh, and stuff. Genio also helped them with uh, audio stuff. Uh, and I've been helping with some interviews and commentary and things. So uh, thank you. Uh, from the bottom of my heart for all your hard work. Uh, I know they've been investing a lot of their time to making sure this will be a kick-ass event and I hope all of you uh, that are watching right now uh, will enjoy the rest that is going to happen on this uh, next two days. Uh, I think this is all the topics that we had to discuss. Um, any last words that you would like to 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 leave us with uh yobe anything you would like to add to everyone out there watching the the love bite battlegrounds get, getting kick-started i would like to buy a non-alcoholic beer for to for nest box for putting the uh palette at an easy to remember memory address of uh, 1632 <laughs> that's just that's just what a good person does <laughs> Thank you, Nesbox. Great. Nesbox is the main developer of, of the KD, for those who don't yeah. know. Uh, Exotic Art, any last words uh, you would like to, to leave us with? Uh, they would like to motivate people to keep watching Love Bite Battlegrounds until the very I, end. I just want to wish good luck to all contestants. Uh, it will be hard fought battles and it will be a lot of fun. Um, and to the viewers, yeah, enjoy the battles and. Try to see if you can predict after the first matches who will win the final. Yep. Okay, so that's it for the opening show. Hope everyone uh, enjoyed. Stay tuned for the bite battles that will be happening very soon. Very soon. Stay tuned. Bye bye. Take care. Bye. -bye. Enjoy. Bye.